The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 9 06 a.m. Monday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we have a mixed market right now. The Dow charging higher up 253 points. That's almost three quarters of a percent, trading at 34,820. You back things up on the Dow. We're talking about right near the highs we had on Wednesday. We're right in the middle of the sell off on Tuesday. I point that out because you take a look at the S&Ps, quite a different story. S&Ps positive by almost half a percent right now. But if you look at it, remember, we were at about the highs of where we were in the Dow. You're talking about 90 points away from that level in the S&Ps right now. We're up by 20 points, half a percent at 45.57. You back it up to the highs of last week on Monday, midday. We're talking about trading down about 110 S&Ps. S&P points from that price level. You look at the action on Friday, though, things were looking pretty dire, under 4,500, just like that. We've clawed back, what is that, more than about 65 points in the S&Ps from the lows on Friday. We jump over to the NASDAQ, the only major index in the negative right now. The NASDAQ, you look where we were on Wednesday, to compare it to the Dow, NASDAQ was trading about 16,400. We're a solid 700 points below where we were Wednesday, middle of the day on those highs, and the Russell right now up by 20 points, or almost a full percent at 21.79. Bitcoin had quite a volatile weekend, uh, not even on this chart. We'll pull it up in a moment. Bitcoin down to 42,000 over the weekend. 42,000. We trained at 58,000 on Friday. How's that for a haircut over the weekend? We're back to 48,000 right now. You're still down $5,000 on the session, technically. Crude getting a pop over the weekend, up $1.93, 68.19, after quite the low last week of 62.43. Gold contract this morning down about $4 to 17.79. We jumped to silver, negative 21 cents at 22.26. And notes and bonds. We're seeing a little bit of lower price and higher yield. The 10 year right now, 131.03. You're talking about negative 11 ticks. You look at the action we had on Friday. I'm going to back this up even a little bit further to get a full 20 day picture of the move we've had. You dive lower to a low of 128.30. And since then, we now got a 131 handle. Remarkable action. You're talking about more than two full points that we've risen in that 10 year. And we jump over to the volatility index to wrap up. Uh, as we run around this index, we saw a high of 35.32 on Friday. We're sitting at 29.29. Uh, higher highs, higher lows in that VIX. We put this thing on a daily for some context. There's some volatility we haven't seen. You could say to maybe March of this year, maybe there was that January acceleration, uh, but a sustained level in the VIX. When you look at the daily, and we're going to take a look at the weekly, uh, there is some action for you. You see the trend which was lower lows, lower highs, uh, not much the case anymore. We're talking about 35, 32 last week. You do have to go all the way back to the January volatility of 37.51 in that VIX. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. So S&P is the only index, I was going to say in the green, NASDAQ charging higher a bit. Let's jump to some of the headlines that we have going on this morning. Uh, before we get to that, Omicron. So all the rages, of course, Omicron. Uh, what I'll say here is I think it's almost just more of a catalyst for market volatility, probably having to do with Fed and inflation and tapering and rates more than it has to do with the variant. There's obviously a variant risk. That'll always be the case. If you ever got a variant that was uh, much more contagious and much more deadly, that was somehow able to evade the vaccines, filling up the hospitals. Yes, that would matter dramatically, folks. It would. Uh, there's no denying it. If that would have happened, jury's still out on this one. Uh, it does look to be more contagious, uh, but first indications show that it also may be milder, uh, which would actually potentially be a good thing for the market. Uh, if milder cases do not lead to hospitalizations and that goes forward, uh, that's going to take some time to play out, though. We'll see how that does. Now, let's jump to what I wanted to get to. Where are we landing? Not, not that one. Are we here? Nope. 
I think this is going to be it. Yes, it is. U.S. winds of inflation are blowing winter gale. Uh, Bloomberg out talking about uh, the economic week ahead. The one um, chart I wanted to pull up here. The Fed's preferred measure of inflation has stayed elevated for longer than policymakers had expected, though it's forecast to cool next year. PCE inflation, which we get on Friday, you're talking about quite the rise here. We come in. Come on, line me up. Uh, there we no no one bar over there we go talking about for October 31st uh, for October you're talking about 5.5 it's not doing a good job of selecting that line 5.05 percent the point being you see the acceleration up in the PCE the economic forecast pulls things down but I'm not sure how long it's going to take to get there folks you're talking about by March of 2023 and really by February or at the end of 2022 on a quarterly basis, okay, you're talking about back to about 2.3%. Uh, Jerome Powell would love that, I imagine, from pushing five, six, seven. You got people out there pushing 7%, maybe 8% estimates for PCE. Probably part of the reason that you had Chairman Powell coming out and expiring the term transitory, maybe, in his opinion. This one's a lot bigger, folks, right now at least, than the Omicron variant. Uh, that would be my take on things. I mean, you look at this market, right? I was listening to Bloomberg early this morning, and they were talking about we're basically 3% from the highs, 4% from the highs, depending on what index you're looking at. Feels a lot worse than a 3% pullback because of the volatility we've been having. You've been having some very big days to the upside as well in this volatility. I mean, November 29th, you had a low of 45.88 and a high of 40. 669 so you're talking about almost 80 points from low to high and then you got the move on december 2nd which was thursday i believe you're talking about low to high of 88 points on those two days you take those two days out of the equation you're talking about an extra 170 points maybe you could be to the downside that would bring us down below 4400 potentially if you take those two days out of the equation not to mention a little bit of a consolidation in the s p's now you take a look at the nasdaq 100 uh, not quite the two big days. You did get one big day, though, where you talk about a low to high of about 400 points in the NASDAQ 100. Point being, folks, you know, 3% from the highs, 4% from the highs. We've had a lot of equities, the biggest of them all, handling things almost as well as you can imagine. I mean, you look at Apple. We're trading at 164 this morning on Apple. 164. There's basically only one day in existence where Apple traded higher going back to December 1st. All right, we're trading at 164. You get the biggest company in the world continuing to show strength as investors look for a safe haven in Apple, almost like I'm seeing articles every single day talking about Apple is basically the new safe haven, like a note or a bond searching out yield. And there's got to be some validity to it, because even in the face of Apple talking about seeing potentially waning demand for their iPhone 13, even in putting out that they've potentially seen some supply problems as well. You're talking about trading right near all-time highs of 164. You combine that, though, with the fact that there are many equities, many, and I'm not even talking about the ones that have gotten decimated, like the likes of Zoom, that's going to be down at 180. you got to back it up on a three-year weekly. 180 on this company, Zoom, right now. You are back, folks, to prices in Zoom of April of 2020. But there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of companies. I mean, DocuSign, one example of the pain going on in some of these equities. DocuSign going to open down another three bucks this morning. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today.
tfnn.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. We got markets charging even higher. We get the S&Ps up 26 points right now. NASDAQ 100 making it making it into the positive, up about 19 points. I pulled up Apple. Apple's going to have an impact. They are higher this morning. We get the Dow up 283. We get the Russell up 24. Let's take a look at some of the FANG stocks. We'll start it off with Apple this morning. Come on, cooperate. There we go. AAPL. Apple shares up uh, $2.50. Now, I talk about it all the time. Apple's got almost $16.5 billion uh, shares. Outstanding. You're talking about adding $2.50. You're talking about adding almost $40 billion in market cap to this company. That is where you get the impact on some of the indices, folks, when Apple adds $40 billion in market cap for an overnight move from Friday's action. They're going to open higher. We jump to Microsoft shares. Microsoft shares basically flat. You're up about $0.70. Cents. Uh, for their shares, we jump over to Google. Google going to be slightly positive by about two to five dollars, trading at twenty eight fifty this morning. We jump around to Amazon. Actually, uh, yeah, we'll call it flat with a bid ask right around Amazon shares. We'll jump to social media. Facebook shares up a bit from three oh six to three oh seven. Okay, jumping back to Bitcoin. Bitcoin trading at forty eight thousand. Uh, jump it over to the chart real quick. This is Crypto Watch. Add a period between the T and the CH. I believe that has to do with like a Swiss uh, ending to that URL. Uh, innovative way. I've just always, one of our listeners, I think it was Paul from Nevada, maybe turned us on to this. Paul, if you're listening, man, give us a call. Uh, CryptoWatt.ch. Uh, important because over the weekend you had Bitcoin down to almost 40. Now, this chart, you can pull up a bunch of them. This is the Kraken uh, exchange. 40,150. You see the dive down. Now, this is an hourly chart, so it was down there for a brief period of time. It jumps back to about 47,000 or so. Now, the article I was reading over here, uh, maybe this is the futures prices. I'm not sure what they're using. Uh, maybe this is the Coinbase price. 42,296 is the low they have before it bounced back to 48,000. Uh, drop of about 10%. It's now down 20% from the all-time highs of more than 69,000, seen November 10th, not even a month ago, folks, not even a month ago. Ether, pretty similar action, fell as much as 17.4% before trimming it to about four. That is slash ETH on the Thinkorswim platform. 
You see it down to 3,900, but again, this does not have action over the weekend on futures, so you don't see that real acceleration lower. You still have Ethereum trading just over 4,000 this morning. Now, pretty remarkable when you look at the entire sector. Uh, they had it down here, yes. The overall crypto sector has shed around a fifth of its value. It would make sense, right? When you have Bitcoin almost at 70,000, now it's at 48. Ethereum back at about 4,000, sliding to $2.2 trillion. But that's an extreme number, folks. You're talking about, I mean, what would it be? $400 billion about a market capitalization of cryptos that just disappear in less than a month. Uh, that's the reason why people love the volatility over there as well. All right, we got a couple on China here. Let's jump to this one. So interesting in terms of China, trying to stimulate their lagging economy, cuts the reserve requirement ratio as economy slows, pretty staggering uh, number of dollars and yuan that they're releasing. And it makes sense. Anytime you cut that reserve requirement, folks, banks, they are required to keep a certain amount of their deposits, US has it as well, on hand. So let's say that normally, Reserve requirements, 10%. Maybe it's nine, maybe it's eight, okay? Uh, maybe it's different. But if it's 10%, you deposit $100 in the bank. That bank has a reserve requirement of 10%. So they are required to keep $10 of your 100 in the bank. They then loan out the 90, okay? Well, what happens though is that they loan out the 90 and what happens? That money is gonna then maybe come back into the bank yet again. Somebody deposits 80, they can do it over and over and over. Point being, you can see that even a one to 2% or half a percent increase or decrease on that reserve requirement can have a staggering impact when you think of how that reverberates of every deposit. People's Bank of China is gonna reduce the reserve requirement ratio by half a percent for most banks on December 15th. That's gonna release 1.2 trillion won or almost 200 billion US dollars of liquidity. It's just gonna free it up. Banks are now going to have in China $200 billion, almost 188 to be exact, that they did not have prior to December 15th, um, signaled, signaled, signaled by Premier Li Keqiang, Keqiang last week when he said that authorities would act as an appropriate time to help smaller companies and marks the second reduction this year. So China's out there. They're trying to pump up the economy at the same time. That's an internal quest in their economy, folks. They are not worried internationally, though, at the same time that you have uh, Diddy delisting. I mean, look at that acceleration. When they delisted, that thing actually went up to nine bucks. Talk about getting sucked in. You finish the day on Friday at 6, and you're going to open today at 580. Now, Alibaba, I think, was trading higher. Yes, Alibaba trading higher by a few dollars. I mean, this slide, watch out for this slide, folks. From 320 to 115, you're below everything on a three-year weekly. How far can we go back here? I mean, did you ever think that Alibaba could be trading at the same price that it was trading at, folks, in 2014? That's a remarkable one. Uh, 114, now Alibaba, they got some news, I think, this morning. Uh, announced a reorganization of its e-commerce team named a new chief financial officer for Alibaba. All right, let's jump into some of the other stocks. You have Kohl's trading higher in the pre-market following news that you got an activist investor, Engine Capital, ur urging them to consider a sale of the company or a separation of its e-commerce business. Uh, they have a stake of approximately 1% in Kohl's. Now, Kohl's, what's interesting is you're up about $2. That's a monthly. Let's put this in three-year weekly for some context here. Kohl's uh, going to open at a, just about 50 bucks. You see pretty much near the lower end of this consolidation as well. And I was talking about earlier, anecdotal, but my experience shopping, I mean, Kohl's, they were competing on price on a couple items I was looking for for kids' toys. They combine that with getting some free Kohl's bucks. You know if you get some Kohl's bucks, you get sucked back into the store and you're gonna spend more than the Kohl's bucks they give you. Uh, we're right back to basically pre-pandemic levels coming into 2020 at a price point of 50 bucks. And we're gonna open this morning at a price point of 50 bucks. You got an activist investor talking about maybe selling that company or potentially selling it off in parts uh, in the market, liking that to the tune of a $2 pop. That's almost a 4% pop right now on Kohl's. All right, jumping down the line to what else we have going on. We talked about Alibaba, MicroStrategy. They got billions of dollars in Bitcoins and that position's gonna take a hit over the weekend. MSTR is their symbol. Some of these companies, you live and die by the Bitcoin, you're gonna have some volatile weekends. Uh, and there is their chart this year if you want some exposure to Bitcoin. We just pull it up on the daily. You see the consolidation they've been in and then we take a look at the weekend action. We're gonna open to 585 from 630 for 
micro strategy. I think they do have like 1.8 or billions of dollars in Bitcoin there. Yeah, Lucid. They are trading lower in a big way after they disclosed a subpoena from the SEC, uh, requested documents related to its SPAC merger deal. Yeah, I imagine the uh, SEC is trying to get a hold of all these SPAC merger deals, sucking in investor money. There's Lucid. You're down from 47 to 40. Just like that, you're down 16, 17%. We take a look at the three-year weekly. We just ran from $24 all the way up to 57, and we're going to open today back at 40 bucks. And you see where we are. I mean, we're basically in no man's land at $40 here. We had a consolidation between 20 and 30 for basically from March all the way through to November. Uh, Lucid going to open. Never want to see the SEC talking about deals there. Um, and I imagine that they're going to do everything they can to get into these SPAC deals because it seems like, at least from the outside, that they are a great way to push out companies to the public without all the regulations that usually come with IPOs. And it seems like that might not be the best benefit for the public. We'll leave it at that. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back. We get the market open in three minutes and 10 seconds. I'll be right back for that 930 open. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. we got markets open right now. we get the S&Ps up 30 points, trading at 45.68. NASDAQ 100 making it into the green, up 28 points. The Dow charging higher right now by 328 points, almost a full percent. And you got the Russell up 9 tenths percent, trading at 21.78. Interesting action in the Russell. You trade all the way from 24.60 down to a low on Friday of 21. 36. You're talking about, what is that, 324 points to the downside. Quite a haircut, and we are right at the lower boundary of this consolidation. Maybe that's where you're going to bounce in the Russell, lining up for the area that we had some support going back basically to when we broke into that area in February. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. Jumping down to some of the stocks, we'll get back to we're at Jack in the Box. Well, why not? We'll talk about it right now. Jack in the Box buying Del Taco in $575 million deal. I believe this is the second biggest Mexican fast food restaurant, probably only to Taco Bell. I found myself saying, geez, that's interesting. I love Mexican. Uh, that the biggest, second biggest company in fast food for Mexican is barely valued at $575 million. The companies expect to benefit from a stronger financial model, gaining scale, helping to add new locations. Uh, they're going to pay $12.51 a share, close Friday at $7.53. Quite a nice premium there. Shares of Jack in the Box were up less than 1% in that deal as well. Uh, they've fallen 9% this year. $1.82 billion is Jack in the Box valuation. And, uh, yeah, so they have 600 restaurants across 16 states. Second largest Mexican fast food chain by number of restaurants behind Yum Brands, Taco Bell. <laughs> Seems like they are probably a very far distant second if they're only in 16 states. I mean, how is that possible, right? Taco Bell, they just dominate the market there in a big way. The combined company is now going to have 2,800 locations. So you got Jack in the Box. They must have approximately, what is that, 2,200. Del Taco is going to have 600, and they're going to close in the first three months of 2022. All right, jumping down the other list of stocks moving. So we talked about Kohl's, we talked about Alibaba, MicroStrategy, and Lucid. Spirit is rising in the pre-market after they get an upgrade from Evercore to outperform from inline, saying the company winds up in a better place each time it goes through a recovery cycle. Spirit, save is their symbol. You're going to basically, uh, now you're positive by 3.7% right now. You're up 81 cents. You look at this chart, though, on a three-year basis. I mean, we're pretty close to the COVID lows there. Yes, we got down to seven bucks. You spent the better part of 2020 under $20. But man, you're right back to where we were in June of 2020. Yeah, remarkable and quite the haircut in terms of from 40 bucks to 22.37. For save, we jump around to some of the other airlines to take a look at this travel sector. Uh, getting a little bit of a pop. Let's see what lines I got on there. Yeah, I don't think those are real. Let's take that off there. Uh, going, excuse me. Back to the daily on Delta, quite the slide for all these travel companies. Now, this is one, folks. You want to talk about a industry that could get hit hard? International travel and cruise ships. Mm -hmm. Because the new variant spreading fast. I think there's a Norwegian cruise line ship out there that already has some cases on it. Let's see, NCLH, they're up 1.9%. They've already paid the price, though, trading in a span of a month from 29 bucks down to 17 last week you're trading at 18. Uh, i was trying to nibble on this thing even in my newsletter this is why you have stops folks thanks so thankfully we did not ride this thing all the way down i was looking for it to hold this trend line it did not we got stopped out that's the reason why you have stops you take a look at this it was a pretty well-defined channel line coming off the covid lows of seven bucks we've now broken well below that channel line you got no region trading down at 1871 technically up 2.4 percent today but this new variant could definitely slow the, the clawback of a cruise ship where cases are spreading so rapidly of the new variant. You check out Carnival as well. Let's put Carnival just on a daily, get a little bit more context. Again, looking for some channel lines. We did not nibble on Carnival in my newsletter, but thankfully not. Now, check this out. You extend that to the right, no to our man Bud Rolfs. Folks, channels, I love channels. I love Fibonacci numbers. I love volume. Keep it pretty simple. Bud would always talk about, if you're not familiar with Bud Rolfs, uh, he had the Tiger Trading Post at TFNN for many years, an outstanding technician, did a show, had a couple newsletters as well. He was the channel master. Our man Bud Rolfs, love him. Hope he's doing well with his family, those beautiful grandkids up in uh, lovely Nashville, New Hampshire. Uh, but he would talk about, folks, you break out of that channel line, okay, and you don't want to be selling the breakout. What you do is you break out of the channel line or buying, it works both ways, and you look for it to retest that channel line. 
And that is where the sell is. I mean, look how perfectly that lines up for Carnival. You know, and it's lovely when you can get setups like this. I wish I had seen it. You could go short. You put your stop on the other side. You know if it gets into the channel line. You're wrong on your assumption, right? And what happens? You have Carnival trade from basically 25 bucks down to 16 bucks, and you have Carnival do it in the span of one month. Now, at some point, folks, there's going to be some value in some of these companies. You know, I'm not sure this is it. Because, again, you're seeing cruise ships have to push things back much further than they thought. You're seeing international travel, uh, not where it was thought to be at this point. Um, certain sectors will be hit by this variant, potentially, even if it doesn't have the widespread effect that maybe the market was thinking that first sell-off that we got the Friday after Thanksgiving. All right, back to the markets. So much for those tech stocks, tech stocks making it into the green. We go back to a daily even, and there's your sell-off in the NASDAQ 100. And interesting, this area is going to be important here because we're talking about the highs of September. All right, we're just inching below those highs right now. You're down 0.7%, 7 tenths percent. We're down 117 points. And check out the sell-off, folks. It was quick, right out of the gate. You sell off from basically 15,000. 734 we're down 130 points on that open and we are right back to the lows we had at six in the morning and we're pretty close to the lows we had on friday in the nasdaq 100. back to a daily for some context here uh pretty critical area because you break below this one i mean where are you going you're probably going 15,150 to potentially 14,835 would be your next stop anywhere in that area in the nasdaq 100. now let's take a look real quick fibonacci wise what we're dealing with in terms of this retracement right now. You're now below a 50% from the move we started on October 13th. And again, technical analysis, folks, an art, not a science. You could take that trend beginning on October 4th. I'm being a little bit more conservative, saying maybe it starts here. The 618, about 15,411 from that area. Uh, we'll see where we stop from here, but things accelerating with the S&Ps now just positive by five points. S&Ps trading at 45.43. Let's see what kind of a retracement we're dealing with in the S&Ps. And you're talking about basically right at about a 50% retracement from the run we had starting on October 13th in these markets. And man, it was quite a run, folks. If you recall, that was like a 9% pop in the markets. We traded up a solid 410 points from 43.21 to a high of 47.40. We did it all in just about a month and a half, and really that run took place from October 13th to November 5th. It was a one-way shot, folks. I mean, look at that run, all those green bars. What do we have? One, two, three, four red bars, really? And really, of those four red bars, only one of them has any type of a body in the candle? You know, retracements, folks, very possible in this market at a time when, I'm gonna take these Fibonacci numbers off here just for some clarity, remove that drawing and move this line. I mean, we're basically sitting at all-time highs, folks. You check out that chart. Keep that in context. If you're thinking about selling, it is not too late to sell. Uh, it is probably too late to sell in some equities, as I was talking about. I mean, Zoom keeps jumping to my mind, folks. Zoom, very strong company, down another 4.2% today. You're coming back to levels that we saw basically almost at pre-pandemic levels, folks. You're talking about Zoom. Came into 2020 at 75 bucks. We were sitting at about $100 when the acceleration really began. You see the volume acceleration, February 17th, starting to pick up. I mean, you're telling me we're coming back down to prices before COVID even existed and Zoom became a mainstay in our lives probably forever? Something to look at. Down from 588 to 176. Might be too late to sell that equity in particular. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's positive by 11 right now. Nasdaq 100 negative by 104. You got the Dow positive by 348. Let's jump into some of those tech stocks and see how they're opening. We had Apple. Apple was up. Uh, look at continuing the climb. Up four dollars and 33 cents. We'll pull it up on a 15 minute basis. Apple accelerating higher. Uh, Apple's its own animal out here, folks. We're up to 166.19. Probably a safe haven going on right now. You're up 2.7 percent for Apple shares in when we have. Tech stocks, NASDAQ 100 down 106. Think about the impact the other tech stocks are having right now in terms of the negativity if you have Apple up 2.7%. Let's jump over to Microsoft shares, down two thirds percent. We jump over to Google shares, down 1.1%. Let's jump to Facebook shares on the positive by 1.2%. We jump over to Amazon shares, down about eight tenths, eight tenths percent right now at 3361. Jumping over to Amazon. So a CNBC article talking about how Amazon making its own containers and bypassing supply chain chaos with chartered ships and long haul planes. Interesting in terms of what they control in here. Just some tidbits to look over. I mean, we've all heard the stories by now. Los Angeles, just basically a big clogged mess. 79 vessels sitting out there up to 45 days waiting to commit to the harbor. Now, a lot of that has to do with truckers, too, folks. Okay, CNBC, uh, excuse me, CBS, 60 Minutes, did a great story a couple weeks ago. Um, just, just talking about going to the ports, seeing the action, seeing the amount of cargo that was sitting there that could not be moved. Um, so Amazon, now, check out some of what they're doing. Amazon has seen a 14% rise in out-of-stock items and an average price increase of 25% since January 2021, even with everything they're doing here, which is crazy. So it spent more than $61 billion on shipping in 2020, up from just under $38 billion in 2019. They might make no money during the holiday season, folks, and this is a big reason why. Now Amazon is shipping 72% of its own packages, up from less than 47% in 2019. Staggering percentage increases here. When you think about the number of packages that that increase represents, it's even taking control of the first step of a shipping journey by making its own 53-foot cargo containers in China. Uh, yeah, those cargo containers, $1,500 to $2,000 before COVID. How about twenty grand if you can get one today? Amazon has probably made about five to 10000 of these containers over the last two years. 
When they bring them into the U.S., they unload them. Guess what? They get to be used domestically in the rail system. They don't have to return them to Asia like everyone else usually does when you're renting them just for that transaction by itself. This is a cargo vessel called Star Ligra, uh, called at the Port of Houston on October 5th, filled with Amazon containers. It's crazy how much that they are con in control. Uh, so they first filed for a, let's see, registered with the agency for the Federal Maritime Commission in 2015. That was the first indication that they were exploring their own ocean freight, 2015. It's amazing how you gotta be prepared and moving forward, folks. Amazon was making that legway already to control their supply chain up and down, probably realizing they were too dependent on external factors, specifically, of course, with the likes of US Postal Service, UPS, FedEx, and shipping. Uh, in 2017, they started quietly operating as a global freight forwarder through a Chinese subsidiary, helping move goods across the ocean for its Chinese sellers who pay to be a part of the Fulfilled by Amazon program. They're doing over 10,000 containers per month of the small and medium-sized Chinese exports. Um, now, check this out. For some of the highest margin goods, Amazon is avoiding ports altogether by leasing at least 10 long-haul planes that can get smaller amounts of cargo directly from China to the U.S. much faster, of course, than by sea. One of the converted Boeing 777 planes, 220,000 pounds of cargo, uh, the small 1,000 container freight being chartered by Amazon and others can hold 180 times that. So obviously a very tiny plane, but sometimes those higher margin items, they probably get them in line and get them out there. Now, they've talked about the bonuses they have, $3,000 to all 150,000 seasonal employees. And then... Uh, I had one more tidbit I wanted to get in there. Where were we? Yes, that they're actually repurposing the vessels that were built not for containers, but really for lumber, chemicals, grain, and agricultural products. So you have these companies, Amazon in particular, buying up ships that were originally made to transport different items and be, but because of the ingenuity and creativity and lack of space, Amazon and many other uh, small, smart people have quickly figured out how to convert them for these multi-purpose vehicles uh, to containers. So interesting to see how the holiday season is going to shake out. If Amazon has to do all this to keep up, folks, just keep that on your horizon because, you know, I'm a Walmart bull as well. But, man, I tell you, we were looking at Walmart over the weekend for some, just some kids' toys. They got a long way to go to make their process anything like Amazon. Continually, we would pull up Walmart. They would say it's available and it wouldn't be available for pickup. They would say it's available. They have some big time um, supply chain, logistics, quality control uh, problems when you're using their app, their website in terms of it just doesn't happen at Amazon where you click on something, you try and order it, it says it's available, and then it's not available. Uh, it's going to be a dicey scenario over the holiday season. Amazon, I imagine, is going to spend as much as they need to to keep everybody happy. And it'd be interesting to see the horror stories that come out in terms of people not getting their presents. Uh, it's already December 6th, folks. December 6th. We got Christmas in 19 days. So be ready for that for some of these retailers. Because Walmart, now we do have Walmart, some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. Uh, I'm going to have a full report out coming up about noon Eastern time today, folks. If you'd like to subscribe, right under the newsletter page on the front page of TFNN.com. Every newsletter we have, folks, comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. like to see Walmart holding kind of that trend line along the bottom here. You almost made it up to all-time highs. We have an all-time high in November of last year. Last year on Walmart, 153.66. We almost make it up there in August. We almost make it back up there in November as well, bouncing a bit up about nine tenths percent for Walmart. Target, quite a different story. Target, to the upside we go. We've broken below this channel line though. We're trading at 245.91. And uh, this channel line kind of got a little bit funky to the downside. We overvalue it to the upside. We're back to the downside again. Not quite as defined as you like to see it sometimes, but you can see the difference for a company like Walmart versus Target. Target shares were at 246, where I said Walmart has an all-time high in November of 2020. We're already, what, 
$66 above that price level on target shares right now. Meanwhile, Walmart isn't even at the all-time highs for that price level. So be wary of some of those retailers as we come into the holiday season. Let's see how Kohl's is trading right now. Yeah, they get a pop of 5.5% on the news that they have an activist investor in the mix right now for Kohl's. And we jump back to the markets and we got higher prices, folks. S&Ps following two red weeks the end of November, the beginning of December, but right now we're positive by about a half a percent to kick off this trading week. Stay tuned, folks. We got one more break. I'll be coming back in three minutes. We'll go over what else we have for this week. Uh, we'll be right back in three minutes, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Target First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, positive by 27. Tech stocks barely in the red right now. NASDAQ negative by 55. That's the NASDAQ 100. The Dow, though, charging higher, up 1.4%. The Dow, you're trading above 35,000 right now. And the Russell up by 18. We jump over to Apple shares. Apple charging higher by about 2.5% right now to the upside. All right, jumping back. So I'm going to, you heard the ad that just played there for Tiger Mortgage, where my dad talks about out there talking about Tiger Mortgage it's just that you can get 7% a year uh, and for that you're basically having the rights to whether it's land 
property or the likes. The one thing I'm just going to talk about in that product, folks, and I wouldn't even plan on doing this, but my dad and I talk about it. Seven uh, percent and nothing, of course, is guaranteed in life, folks. OK, but my bias is it's a great investment if you're looking for some yield. And when you start to consider and your money is tied up in that for a certain period of time. OK, this is not like a stock trade. And uh, if you're interested at all, you can reach out to my dad. You can email him or just call the office. And what I want to talk, though, is when you look at like four years, right, if you get 7 percent for four straight years, I mean, that's akin, folks, for Amazon shares closing out at almost 4,300 over that time. You're trading at 3351. The power of compounding is remarkable. Okay, so let's say you have money in stocks right now. You've had quite a run. You have, and I'm not saying sell on Amazon because I'm not selling Amazon, okay? I, I believe that Amazon could probably be at 4300 in four years, but it's the way that your mind should be thinking as you're thinking of where you allocate your funds because some of these equities have had quite a run recently. And when you say to yourself, do I want to own Amazon at 3352 right now or do I want to take that money and put it in in an investment that could earn 7% over four years. Yes, there's risk to it, folks. That is not a guaranteed yield, okay? There are risks. That is not an FDIC insured investment, okay? It is not. But you'd have to have your Amazon shares trading at 4,300 by the end of that four years to equal the same amount of yield during that time. And in my opinion, folks, I would say there's probably uh, less risk in that type of, uh, of an investment then maybe Amazon. But I'm a huge Amazon bull, and you're back to 3350, folks. With that, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for starting your Monday with me. Great to be back in the office. Stay tuned. We got Basil Chapman's up next. Live programming all day. Have a great Monday.